Hey everybody, I'm Shane from Admin Arsenal. Let's uninstall Office 2010 from our computers. Uh, the instructions here will pretty much work with Office 2007 and 2013 as well. And we're going to be focusing for this example on uninstalling the 32-bit version of um, Office 2010. But we're going to do it from both 64 and 32-bit, or on 32 and 64-bit computers. So uh, there's a few things you need to know. If you have a PDQ inventory, you may have used this. I'm going to go uh, to our Office 2010 collection. See, we have three computers. Uh, if you look at the bits over here, iCal is 32 and the other two computers are 64. Uh, if you were to actually uh, go into the Applications panel of a win one of these windows, uh, you would see Office, in this case, Professional Plus 2010. Now, there is an uninstall string. If you've used uh, PDQ inventory to uninstall before, uh, you know you usually can just right-click and say uninstall. Uh, you do have to provide the silent parameters, but there's something missing, and this is what kind of makes um, uninstalling Office a little tricky. There's a couple of prerequisites that you have to fill. First thing you have to know, the path uh, of the Office installation on the target computer. In this case, the, the important part is Office 14. Uh, that's for Office 2010. And then if you scroll over here, you'll see after the uh, slash uninstall, there's uh, Pro Plus. Now, this can vary. This is the product uh, ID, um, product code, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the uninstall is going to require that you have the correct value for this. So it could be, you know, if you have Office Standard or Office Enterprise, it could all, uh, all be uh, different. Um, good, the good news is, though, for the most part, you'll have the same value across your enterprise, uh, hopefully. So we know it's Pro Plus. Now, what if you don't have inventory? There's a couple of things that you can do to kind of find out just what is that value. If you go to a computer that has Office 2010, and uh, go maybe, I'm going to go to the C drive of iCal here, and go into Program Files, and it's going to be Program Files x86 if you're on a 64-bit machine, because remember, we're talking about the 32-bit Office. You want to go into Common Files, Microsoft Shared, and um, let's scroll on down here. Office 14, and then Office Setup Controller. And this is where you're going to have to do a little bit of due diligence. You can see I see Pro Plus there. You're gonna d don't, don't worry about the Excel or the, um, you know, the OneNote values. Look for something that stands out like this, Pro Plus. That's what we're looking for. So that's how you can do it if you don't have uh, inventory running in Pro mode. We'll go ahead and uh, close iCal for right now and inventory. So once we have that, you're going to want to create an XML file. It's generally called config.xml. Now, I've got one that we, we have to deploy this down to the target computers as part of the uninstall. Uh, I've got one that's living out on our network share right now. It's a very, very simple XML file. I'm going to open that up, and you can see just four lines. Uh, you open it up, the configuration product. Notice there's Pro Plus. Once again, that's in my case. Uh, yours may change or be different. And then, very important, the display level equals none. You want that set to none. Uh, completion notice is no. You can see suppress modal is yes, and accept the EULA is also yes. I've also added a setup reboot ID with a value of never, because you don't, at least I don't want this just to reboot after the uninstall. You may differ. And then you close it out with the uh, slash configuration. Perfect. So I've got that living out uh, on a network share. And then I've got a package, just a very simple PDQ to play package that w I've created. Notice I've deleted the uh, install step, the default de uh, install step that usually comes with a new package, and I've replaced it with two command steps. To get a command step, you just click the new step. There's your command. If you're using PDQ deploy five or earlier, you'd see a command button in your package window. So I've got uninstall office on 64-bit. Notice this is expecting, uh, this is just saying, hey, if this file exists, you rather simple if statement there on this batch file. If it exists, notice I'm using the common program files x86 variable. And then the 32-bit just looks for common program files. I've got the conditions set to 32-bit on this step and obviously 64-bit on this one. So uh, we've got these, we've got this uh, command set up. Notice that in the additional files, I've also added that config XML that I just pointed out. So that's it. I just went to add files, put that path in. We want this config.xml copied down to the target during the uninstall. And then the, um, 
The uninstall string looks like it, it did when you were uh, in PDQ inventory, except we've added a slash config. I'm going to make this a little wider so it's hopefully a little easier to read. Uh, we've added a slash config parameter, uh, space, and then the path to the config XML, and that's the path on the target. So we're using the built-in variable CD, which stands for current directory, because this is going to be copied down to the working directory of your deployment. All right, let's go ahead and do it. We'll just hit deploy. You can choose your targets. Obviously, you could go to PDQ inventory and look in your Office 2010, but I know which ones I'm going to do. I'm going to do the computer Winland, and um, I'm going to do iCal. Perfect. And we will hit deploy. Now, this could take a little while, depending on your environment. It could take you know, two minutes to, to 10 minutes or even longer. So it looks like it's kicked off on Winland and kicked off on iCal. If you want, just so you can s get an idea of what we're looking at here, I'm going to go back to inventory for a moment. And I'm going to open up iCal. I'm going to go to the admin dollar share, which is the Windows directory on a target computer. In that Windows, you'll see admin arsenal, PDQ to play runner. This is not necessary for the uninstall. I'm just doing this to show you uh, kind of what's going on um, underneath uh, under the scenes. Go into the service one, and you'll see an exec folder. And these are the two files that we've pushed down to the target. There's the command.cmd, which is really just the, the body of your uh, command step. If I edit that, you'll just see, w minus the formatting, that was the, uh, that was the command step. And then there's the config XML file that was pulled down from the file share. So uh, these are being copied down and uh, working. So let me just go ahead and minimize some of this stuff. And uh, so we don't just have you on the line. Oh, by the way, you can see uh, Winland is the 64-bit, so it's running the 64-bit step, whereas iCal is running the 32-bit. So we'll come back when these are wrapped up and uh, close it up. All right, we're back. So far, Winland is completed. iCal is still working. I want to, oh, and there's iCal finished. I really want to call out uh, something. If you notice in the install steps, or the uh, command steps, pardon me, uh, the success codes. I've added 0, 1641, and 3010. It's pretty important because these are actually all considered successes. When you create your uh, uh, command step, it's going to only have zero by default. You want to add 1641 and 3010. Those are just um, Microsoft installer exit codes, meaning 3010 means it was uh, successful, but it needs to reboot. The target does need to reboot. 1641 means it was successful and it's currently rebooting. So if we were to go into, uh, let's go look at iCal. Yep, sure enough. Uh, Number two finished, it did return 3010, so it's saying the Windows machine does say, I need to reboot. And if we go back into PDQ inventory, they were set this, uh, the deployment sends a scan. That's how I've got this configured to scan those computers once they're finished, and you can see that they're no longer in the Office 2010 uh, collection. So that's been removed. That's how you do it. I know it's a lot of steps, but just pay attention to that config XML. Pay attention to the product code. Find out what that is, and you should be good to go. All right, for everybody at Admin Arsenal, I'm Shane. Have a good one, guys.